Good morning, Rock Church, my brothers and sisters on YouTube and Twitter. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson, and it is Wanderers Wednesday. That's right. This is another day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to celebrate life and breath this day. All right, let's get into the Word of God. But most of all, before we do that, I want to pray for us, okay? Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this word on this wondrous Wednesday. Open up our minds and hearts, God. We want to hear exactly what you have to say to us. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. Well, amen, amen. Come on on. Come on on. Catch it, catch it, catch it. Get on in there, y'all. Well, listen, we're going to start the little series here as we are getting into uh, the final month of the year. Tomorrow, we, it'll be December the 1st. Can you believe that? Wow. Today is November the 30th. Wow. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, time ain't waiting on nobody. So if you don't catch up with time, time going to leave you behind. I'm telling you. And the way we catch up with time by being in the moment, stand in the moment, stand in the moment. Yeah, stand in the moment. We're going to uh, start a new series today. And the title of the series is Peace and Holiness Goes Hand in Hand. That's right. Peace and holiness. They go hand in hand. You can't have one without, without the other. So I'm going to ask a few questions today. And uh, one of the questions, would you consider yourself being at peace Right in the season of life you're in today. Would you consider yourself at peace? Yeah. At peace. And if not, would you like to be in that season of peace? You'd like to find that peace, that tranquility. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The other question, do you find it challenging to be at peace with everyone these days? To be at peace with everyone. Is there anybody in your life or in your community of relationships and re any relative that you are not at peace with today? I want you to think about that. Write their name down. You don't have to put it on the chat because at the end, I'm going to give you some homework. Yeah. Anybody has taken your peace away from you. Yeah. The other question I want to ask you this morning, is it easy for you to uh, to be aggravated or somebody to get on your nerves. You know, you've been doing real good. You've been having your, your devotions. You've been reading. You've been worshiping. But all of a sudden, man, somebody got on your nerves. You feel aggravated and you feel like they done stole your peace away from you. Yeah. It's trying to get back. You're trying to get back to that place, that place of peace, that place, that place of tranquility. But you're finding it hard to do that because of, you know, man, they didn't got on your nerves. So, so, so somebody asked me this question. I was talking to them the other day and they were just telling me they were just at a place of not at peace. You know, they, they was feeling good about the Thanksgiving, leading up to Thanksgiving, but just some things have happened in their life and they just, without peace, they love God. They, 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 they know God and, and they've been doing the things of God, but they're just not at peace. They're not resting well. They're not sleeping well. And therefore, they're making different decisions. So, so Pastor Rob, how are you doing? You always seem like you're at peace. You always seem like, you know, even going through your surgery, man, you had a peace of calm about, you, about yourself. You seem like you were unnerved. So I said, man, I told him, I said, look, listen, let, let, me, let me just say this. That I, I struggle too, right? I struggle too, and I've struggled in the past. And uh, he says, "What what what's some of the things that cause you to uh, feel like somebody uh, attacking your peace or you? They on your nerves?" I said, "Well, folks who don't appreciate my acts of love. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I love people, and they don't appreciate it. it make me feel some kind of way. Folks who don't reciprocate of being kind." There are times I say good morning to people, hello to people. They just look at me. They won't even, they won't even reciprocate a, a response of good morning. You know, I mean, that kind of moves me, you know. And, and folks who are demanding, yeah, they demanding. They This is what they want me to do. This is what they won't get done. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I've struggled with that. And most of all, folks who think themselves, think of themselves being entitled. 
just because uh, whatever status they had in life, they think things going to go their way. It's supposed to happen their way. Yeah, those are the kind of things that cause me to uh, struggle and uh, uh, sometimes be on my nerves. But I fight really hard for somebody to take my peace away from me. Come on, somebody. So here's the deal. If you are not at peace in your season today and you want to find peace, you don't feel connected. You feel like, man, you easily unnerved because of people and situation and circumstances is pushing your buttons. And you ready to get to a place where you don't get your buttons pushed as much or respond as quickly. But you want, you want some firepower. You want to be able to say, you know what? You may try it this time, Satan, but you ain't going to win. See, the ram of word found on this wondrous wind, so he's going to give us power. I'm going to tell you what the word of God says, brothers and sisters. But first of all, the guy asked me, he said, how do you respond to it? How do you respond when people make you feel the way you feel based on what you were saying? You know, you know, you show acts of love and, and you know what? They seem like they run over you and they don't reciprocate being kind. And, you know, hey, man, you feel like there are times where people feel demanding and entitled. How do you feel? I said, well. Let me just be honest with you. Sometimes I am at a place where this honorable response. What do you mean, Pastor Rod? Well, some of my response is ungodly, especially in my head. May not come out my mouth, but it come out my head. And so, and so I, I feel some kind of way. And he says, why, why don't come out your mouth? I, because it's hard to take it back. You know, you got to remember, man, I'm, I'm doing my best to be that example, that spiritual figure, you know, best I can. And so I may think it, I may not say it, but still God knows it. And, and I'm still messed up. I'm still outside the will of God. But he said, how should you respond? I said, okay, don't you, don't watch the Wednesday uh, devotion is going to teach all of us how we should respond when we unnerved. People get on your nerve, you aggravate it, and you may respond un ungodly or dishonorable. I don't know. I'm just saying how I have. And says, this word going to help us. So, turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. On this Wonders Wednesday, the Bible says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone. What? Oh, my God. Make every effort, every endure, every, I, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta do whatever it takes, whatever endeavor I must take, I must, this, this is what it means, effort. That means I got to go out my way to be at peace, to live at peace with people who are disrespectful. I got to go out my way for people who hurt me. I got to go out my way, man, for people who won't meet my needs. I got to go out my way for people who, who aggravate me. I got to go out my way. Well, the Bible says, <laughs> make every effort to live at peace with everyone. And watch, it doesn't finish. It says, and to be holy. What in the world? And to be holy? It's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, it's a challenge because... The last thing I want to respond to with somebody who has, you know, <laughs> aggravated me, got on my nerves, folk who, re who, who refuse to reciprocate acts of kindness after being given, mean Tim, I need to be holy. Here's the reason why. Without holiness, no one sees the Lord. This is scripture. So it reads like this. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Bottom line. Oh my God. I got to make every effort to live in tranquility with everyone. And everyone means everybody. In other words, that means we don't escalate any sort of conflict. In other words, difference of opinions, we don't escalate it. Yeah, we can have our opinion, but we don't take it to the other level. You know that other level you can go to? That level can be considered probably unholy. We don't get to escalate that, right? We don't get to, even when it's misunderstanding, don't escalate a misunderstanding. There's a way to talk through it. 
And based on what I'm reading is to look at a way to be holy. Right. And so 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 what happens if we escalate, you know, conflicts and misunderstanding, then we get entangled with uh, controversy. Come on, somebody. And that controversy is going to definitely lead you down the path of arguing. Oh, you're going to argue. You're going to go off. Somebody going to go off, brothers and sisters. And you can't take back stump something you just said once you go off. But I have to come to understand myself as a Christian that I have to live with peace, in order to live with peace, I cannot be uh, dishonorable with my words, okay? These days, we're living in are very fragile, brothers and sisters. There's a volatile uh, season that we're living in. People, at a drop of a, a snap of a hand, they snap on you really quickly. And, hey, man, even your loved ones, people you have done life with, they will go off on you. And you wonder what in the world just happened. And sometimes people go off in ways by allowing themselves to be separated from you. Yeah, they may not say anything, but they'll separate themselves from you. Is that godly, right? See, there's ways that we can, you know, and we should respond. So the question is, can you engage in any sort of conflict or misunderstanding or any uh, controversy and arguments being holy, or better yet, responding holy. Can you do that? Well, you don't understand my relationships, Pastor Rob. No, this ain't got nothing to do with me understanding the relationships. I already told y'all, man, how I feel about when people, you know, don't appreciate my acts of love and not reciprocating, being kind. I thought I'm being kind or demanding or people who feel themselves being entitled because they status in life. Oh, I know. I told you now. I know there are times and I feel some kind of way, but I know I'm being dishonoring to God, even if I don't say nothing to nobody. But early on, before I became a pastor, I didn't care what you think about me. I said it. I, I cussed when I was a Christian, you know. Early on, I cussed. It ain't make me no difference. But I had to learn. I had to learn. This is actually about holiness. It's about being close to God. It's about being in tune with God. Why am I going to let somebody take me off my track of being holy? Therefore, I can see, hey, man, no matter what they're telling me, how, how close do I want to be with God? See, the Bible says something about that, brothers and sisters. The Bible says holiness is God's critical facet of his character. It's who God is. And God desires, even commands, that his people seek at the holiness. If we don't imitate the lifestyle of holiness, then we're not going to reflect what it is to be God's sons and daughters in Christ. So therefore, the Hebrew writer, he demands, he urges Christians to do what? Make every effort to live at peace with everyone, and to be holy. What did Jesus say on the Mount, uh, the Sermon on the Mount? What did he say in Matthew 5, 8? He says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Boy, you can't see God when, when you ain't holy. And, and I'm telling you, holiness, brothers and sisters, and peace go hand in hand. You can't have peace, and you're talking about, man, hey, man, you holy. Because there's somebody, there's some things have taken you away from that peace that God is talking about. And therefore, we have to respond in a certain way. And the only way to respond is to be holy. So therefore, we got to see that, hey, man, some of our self-seeking and unholy interests got to be put on a back shelf. Like we have to burn that up, man, because I'm guaranteeing you. If you ain't at peace today, it's probably because you have not responded in holiness yet. Phew, I know, y'all, I know as I was doing this study, my partner asked me all these questions. He asked me these questions, and it sparked and inspired me to talk about, hey, man, peace and holiness hand in hand. Because he wanted to know how I would respond. Because he feeling some kind of way. And then, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. We not alone. We all feeling some kind of way. Yeah, that peace that surpasses understanding. We want to get that back. How do you get that back? By living in holiness. So, because we were called to holiness in Ephesians 1, chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. We were chosen to be holy. So if you were chosen to be holy, that means you were chosen for peace. 
that peace that surpasses understanding. So I want to know, are you willing to release your faith on this wondrous Wednesday, knowing that peace and holiness goes hand in hand? You can't have one without the other. So what we need to do, Pastor Rod, keep it simple, saints, by remembering what the word of God says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 through 16. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. In other words, when you lack of knowledge or information about the word of God. So therefore, Pastor Rob, you can't go and cuss nobody out. You can't go in there, man, make them feel some kind of way because they refuse to reciprocate acts of kindness because you gave them kindness. So what? So what? They don't appreciate, man, your acts of love. So what? So what if they want to be demanding? So what if they want to feel entitled? You can't go back like you used to be, man. You got to be different. You cannot be dishonorable. You got to be honorable. That means you have to be worthy of what? The Bible says, an obedient children. Verse 15 says, but just as he who called you is holy. Come on. One who called to be holy says, so be holy in all that you do. Come on, somebody. This is the word of the Lord. Verse 16, for it is written, be holy because I am. You are representing the great I am. Come on, somebody. The king of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am who sits at the right hand of God, who's interceding right now. I am the one who I am. He said, that's who I am. So that's who you become. He goes on and tells us clearly. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, he says, listen, because we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves with everything that can defile our body or spirit. In other words, man, you got to get rid of that stuff, man, that is easily going to aggravate you. That's going to easily get on your nerves. Because you know, guys, I'm still having some nerves, nerve challenges. I don't have all the balance I need to have. And. You know, I can't run because the nerve is still healing. So when somebody get on your nerves, it's a deficiency. It's going to cause you to not do and be all that you can. If you let them get there, if you let them lean on your nerves, you will become paralyzed. And you'll be paralyzed in the hope of the future of holiness won't be present. You'll be paralyzed. That man, And listen, brothers and sisters, you can't move from a paralyzed paralytic state. Here's the reason why. Because guess what? That nerve is damaged. You can't let people get on your nerves no more. Don't let them get you jumping all aggravated because something they said or won't say, did or won't do. Come on somebody. I know y'all tracking with me today. He says, and let us work towards complete holiness because we fear God. So how do we do that? Three ways, brothers and sisters. Number one, Make every effort to live in peace, period. <laughs> hey, man, I ain't rocket science. It said, this, you got to go do it. Put it in action. You best to know it's coming at you today. You best to know, man, this challenge going to come at you. These And these temptations going to come your way. You got to do it. Number two, show love to the unlovable. In other words, to people who do not appreciate your acts of love. You got to show love to them. Okay, they do not uh, reciprocate being you being kind to them. They don't reciprocate that, or they demanding because of who they statue in life, or oh, better yet, those who feel like they entitled. Show love to them to the lobo. And number three, abstain from being dishonorable. You understand? Abstain from being disgraceful. Disgraceful. Abstain from being unworthy of being a child of God. That's why it's important that we don't respond that way. Because Paul told Timothy something in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 21. He says, therefore, if anyone cleanse himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for good in every word. Ain't that something, y'all? <laughs> this was inspired by a conversation I had with a good friend of mine. He wanted to know how I respond when people get on my nerves. How I respond, man, when people don't reciprocate my acts of love. And I know, man, in my head, I know I can be ungodly in my head. You see, brothers and sisters, I thank God that God is, he, 
He's on the throne. He's working with us. He's giving us the tools so that we don't respond in a dishonorable way. Trials come in your way. Just we got to be able to understand we have the tools given to us. Embrace them. Embrace them. They come and embrace them. Though it's going to be okay, embrace it. I didn't write this, man. The word of God inspired. It says, make every effort to live at peace with everyone and be holy without holiness. No one see the Lord. You want to see the Lord? Live in holiness. Heavenly Father, we bless you on this wondrous Wednesday. We thank you, God, for the challenge. We thank you we also, God, for giving us an opportunity to really understand how to keep our peace. God, we give our peace away. And when we give our peace away, I'm sure holiness follows what we then just gave away. Because we respond from a place of hurt. Because they say hurt people hurts people. But God, I pray that we will use peace and holiness to always be able to have good conversation with people who find themselves, they want to argue, God, may we not argue with them. May we respond in a way that what Jesus would respond. Controversy, God, made us, may we never escalate this stuff. Things that happen in our life, God, we don't have to escalate all the, all the things of misunderstanding and conflict. We can be different. So, God, I pray that if we can't say nothing loving, we won't say nothing at all. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. Y'all just been kissed. Come on, somebody. This is Wanderers Wednesday. Just keep it simple, saints. I'm with y'all. I understand. Trust me. All we got to do is just keep working at this. Keep working at this. The Spirit of the Lord will do what he does. Just say, Holy Spirit, help me to keep peace and holiness hand in hand in my life. As I'm a husband to my wife, a wife to my husband, a father to my children, a mother to my children. As I am a, as I am a citizen to my community, I want peace and I want holiness to be hand in hand in my life. This is Pastor Robert Louis Stevenson. And it is Wondrous Wednesday. I have a word from the Lord tonight on our Bible studies. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be at 7 o'clock. Tune in. I love you all. Go ahead, live in peace and holiness.